love you. <laughs> We're so Bye. excited to be here. <laughs> Yay! We're going to give you a minute to come on in. <laughs> um, and we want to start seeing where you're from, who you are, all those good things, because we love you. <laughs> Hello. Um, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Um, oh yeah, since you said it like that, that reminded me the last time we were here was on Earth Day. So that's very easy to remember that way. So it's been, what, a couple of weeks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, yeah a couple of weeks. I wanna go ahead and, and, and just welcome everybody. And we're so excited to be here and we're so thankful to Laura to, to allow us to be on your, on your channel. I mean, on your, what is this, a page? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> to be on your page and and just being able to uh, enjoy all of you. Um, you are just so wonderful. We love you, love you, love you. I'm Julia Cannon, and um, you know it's hard to introduce yourself, um, <laughs> but I, I am. <laughs> I'm Julia Cannon. How about that? <laughs> so, <Wow. laughs> Um, uh, sometimes I have an identity crisis, so I'm not really sure, you know, how, what to say about myself, but, um, um, one of the daughters of Dolores Cannon, I'm carrying on her legacy of QHHT. We teach around the world. And, um, also I do soul speak language of your body. That was a book I wrote. And so I have things with around that. So it's all these, you know, things with the body. Um, I was a registered nurse. So that's kind of where that fell in line. So you didn't want my whole history and bio. I didn't intend to give it, but anyway. So <laughs> um, my my cohort, my partner, my um, my equalizer. Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> we were just talking before the show how we, you know, we provide a yin and yang to each other. And so um, there we go. My equalizer. <laughs> Um, we teach the classes all around the world and he's with me because he is this amazing strategist. He knows what to do to, to build and to help things expand. I mean, he is what can I call him? Mr. Expansion. How about that? Mr. Expansion. And in the classes, he's Mr. Excitement. And so <laughs> you just got all these different hats you wear, don't you, Kaya? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I couldn't do this without you. I tell you, I couldn't do this without you. And we have this, oh, and they're, anyway, Kaya Wittenberg. <laughs> so, I'm so all over the place. Can you tell that? It's the full moon. <laughs> I, was, I was really working on <laughs> getting centered and getting everything in alignment. And then it just went. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's. Yes. I guess somebody needed that. Um, so if anybody, okay, this is what they're telling me. <laughs> um, someone or someones are having a hesitancy about putting themselves out there because they're concerned about getting it right and getting it professional and how you look and how this and that and that, da, 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 da. oh my gosh, you know, that makes me tired just thinking about it. And so, See, when they when things like that happen with me, as far as like what just happened, that's to help give an example of it really doesn't matter. And they told me that so long ago. It's like, just get over yourself. Because I had that really thing about being professional, you know, you know, I wanted that professional image and I wanted people to take me seriously. Well, that one was thrown out the window. You know, it's like, don't worry about it. It's what it's who you are. It's what you have to say, things like that. That's what, you know, just show your heart, show you who you are. That's what people want to see. And, and sometimes we have to trip over ourselves so that people can, can really understand or really connect or whatever. So it's okay. I'm tripping over myself all the time. <laughs> and there we go. I just showed it to you again a little bit ago. So anyway, that was for you, whoever you use, whatever was needing that. So I really want to encourage you for getting out there. Um, and I really applaud those that are. Um, it's not, hey, wh why did I take over the show, Kaya? I mean, oh. <laughs> all of a sudden I just realized I'm just doing this. Um, go. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I forgot where that was going, but it was something okay. in, in in the whole making things and stuff and, and being out there. So anyway, Kaya Wittenberg, <laughs> thank you for being here. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. 
Um, first, I'd like to give a big hello to everyone out there. We've been doing these now consistently on a week to week basis, and it's so cool. We're getting on an average of 20 to 30 countries tuning in for these. So hello to Serbia, Malaysia. Yeah, yeah and Australia. Australia. England, <laughs> Greece, there we go. The Netherlands, London. Canada, <laughs> Spain, Yorkshire. I mean, that's not its own country, but <laughs> UK. <laughs> and uh, and many, many more. Um, mm -hmm. a, big, a big show lined up for you guys today. It's it's another fascinating week as we continue to drive forward into expansion into this new earth. And uh, before I get in even deeper into it, yeah, everybody come on and say hello because okay. we intend these sessions to be a party. This is this is the weekly event where you can tune in and you're gonna guaranteed get a lift off. And what I mean by that is. Whatever state you're in, before you begin, we give you our personal guarantees that the state you will leave after being here with us for this time and sharing the energy, you will be in a higher vibration. And along the way, we're going to bring up some large concepts, some expansive concepts, and we're going to be connecting ideas in unique ways that hopefully light some sparks in all of our minds on how we can come together and support one another to make the most of this beautiful world that we're in. Because that's the name of the game. We have a special theme that we started with today, and it's a theme that has a lot of excitement and significance to it. Like, it, when I say this theme to anybody, and, and naturally a response is people are gonna feel good. Very rarely would I ever bring this up and someone wouldn't feel good. So that's pretty cool right in and of itself. And the theme today is luck. Luck. What do we think of when we think of luck? What is it for some people? Some people it might be, ooh, I feel lucky when I'm in Vegas. Okay. <laughs> I hope you do. Because <laughs> you're, you're instituting a certain challenge for your luck and you're trying to put it into a mechanism and it creates a greater intensity for that luck and it can give you a much deeper experience. But we don't need to go to a casino to think about our luck and to dive more deeply into our luck. And more importantly, to bring more luck into our lives. And that's the theme today is how can we bring more luck into our lives so that we experience coincidences and synchronicities and allow ourselves to go into this new earth in a very smooth fashion that's not quite as bumpy. <laughs> We've been talking about this now for a couple of weeks. And as we transition into the new earth, it's probably best to leave the baggage behind. Because as we're going in through that triangular portal, through that fit, through that doorway into a new earth, there's not a lot of space. Not a lot of space to bring these heavy, chunky things, heavy weights, these limiting beliefs, barbells that we're holding to try and just, oh, let me just bring this old belief. And I, I'm knocking into the doorways as we try and get through this portal. We're going into a higher dimension and closer to our light bodies that are less dense. And into that, it serves us to let go of those things that are holding us behind. And they can be beliefs, they can be attitudes, they can be obsessions, they can be emotions, they can be feelings of like uh, a lack of gratitude, of feeling that you need to get even, of selfishness. There's a lot of things that you could be bringing into this thing. Can we lump it all into drama? Drama. Yeah, we could, we could lump a lot of that into drama and the, the craving. And that's a whole different topic that we could just talk about <laughs> once we get through this, because drama is something as human beings that we do have this inherent attraction to. We do have this pull into drama from time to time 
that gives us that polarity and can trigger off dopamine and excitement and interest. But the way that we use it can be a bit backwards. And there's a way to use that drama in a positive way that drives us forward. We'll save that. We'll place that a little bit further. That could be something we talk about in a bit. But getting back to our point about luck, I'm going to teach you, like, now we'll go over three fundamental core tenets of bringing more luck into your life. We start with the first. And the first is sort of a, a cleansing and a way of transitioning over from whatever state you're in to this state. Because the luck state is a state that's happiest when it's got clean energy that's associated with it, when it doesn't have the weights. And how do we get to that state? What's the easiest way that we could get into that state? It's thinking thoughts of gratitude. When you're in the zone of gratitude and you're actually focusing and you're harnessing your energy and you're putting it into the gratitude, it is impossible, impossible, absolutely impossible to feel the polarity and the density of that which is negative and not serving us to feel those things that are weighting us down because there's something beautiful about feeling that gratitude. It just propels you up. And whatever state you're in now, I can give you a number of reasons that you are lucky and special and should feel extremely grateful for this opportunity that you've been given. First off, think about this opportunity of this earth experience being here in this world that's changing so quickly, and now you have this time where you have less restrictions, you have more space, you have more ability to really get your head where it needs to be without having external demands that are pulling you in different directions. You're lucky that you're in this space right now, and it's a place that you can look at many years from now and seeing this as a launching pad into something really special into your life. We're at a place now, if you're able to receive this, you probably have internet connection, probably have a cell phone connection, right? We Not everybody on the earth is that lucky. Not everybody on the earth has these sort of connections. They say something like half the earth lives on less than a dollar a day. That's a lot. If you think about it, if you think about your situation and you're not living on a dollar a day, that's something to be quite grateful that you have a basis of wealth. Not that that will make you happy, but you have a basis of wealth and you were born into a situation where you have opportunities and chances to do something special with this life. And you're not roadblocked by as many things that are outside of your control. You're free. You're feeling a lot of freedom for it. So tapping into that gratitude for the things that you have, the people that you have in your life, the possessions that you have in your life, the opportunities that you have in your life, the connection that you truly have to your source, your ability to actually dream and feel and connect. Those are all sources and great things to be grateful for. So that's step one. Step two is to relax, is to relax into yourself. And after feeling that sense of gratitude, allow yourself to just relax and allow your energy to come from within instead of being externally focused. Allow your energy coming back into you and being internally focused into your own universe. Step two. And step three is once you've zoned in, you brought your energy back in, now's your time to get back to your childlike state to get yourself into a state when you were a kid and you remembered what you wanted to be when you wanted to grow up and you just thought like, oh, I could be this, or I wanna do that, or I could have this thing. And the little things seemed like big things when you're a child. And when you're a child, you don't judge, you just think and feel and everything seems possible. And it's a beautiful thing to tap into that state and be able to experience a dream reality from that state. A state where you can close your eyes and you can feel your life in every way, exactly the way that you want. And you can do this 
every day and build that energy and that momentum. And if you make that a habit to just see a preferred life, a life that has everything that you want in it from a childlike state, and you make a point to do this, especially in the morning, you'll be developing momentum. There'll be that momentum of the physical that'll be starting to roll like a snowball and it'll be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the way that the universe works is you'll be putting the law of attraction into play and you'll be drawing that dream reality. You don't have to judge it along the way. You don't ever have to think, am I there yet? You just have to feel it and get it going every day. And you get a fresh reset with every night's sleep, get that energy back up, get that preferred state of gratitude, relaxation and dream reality, and then let it go through your day. It's that simple. You don't need to force it. You need to allow the universe to work on your behalf. And what happens is the byproduct of the universe is synchronicity. It starts bringing you these things. Now, these things don't have to be massive, grand, advanced works, giving you the thing right there in your hands. That's not where we are. It can be very subtle things that you're picking up that are noticing, that are coincidences, that are things that are coming into your life. That, hmm, let's see, I just thought about you and you called me. Oh, oh, that just appeared. I was thinking about it. It's actually right there. These things that we tend to dismiss as coincidences and accidents and whatever they may be, this is a process of your luck. It's unwinding and it it can happen consciously through this type of focus. Very simple. Three things to do. Spend a little time. Get into that state of gratitude in your morning and allow the momentum of luck to come into your life because you are destined to have a life that is full of luck. That is what the new earth is about. That is what 5D reality is about. It's about pure synchronicity. It's about thinking and there it is and it comes. And that gap is getting closer and closer and closer between what you think about and what you actually experience. And you won't need the proof. Mm -hmm. Such a thing right now with humans of, okay, if I could just prove that something's there, then I can feel good. If this can happen to me, boy, then once I get that, I'm going to feel good. I'm almost there. Drop that. Mm -hmm and allow yourself to get closer, not judging, not wondering, but just seeing it and feeling it in the chain of events are miraculous. Part of the miraculous world that we're entering, part of this lucky world that you're entering, part of this luck and love that is part of you, the intention you can feel in your solar plexus of setting something, and you can allow it once you have the thought to reverberate into your heart and to actually feel a body to dream connection, so you're physicalizing it. Physicalizing concepts to body, concept to body, idea to body, and circulating between your mind, your heart, and your solar plexus, and different energy shifts that will be supplied to you through this process. That's what I wanted to talk about today. <laughs> Get us thinking. Mm -hmm. Get us thinking about how lucky we really are. And how lucky I am for having all of you. It's a beautiful world. Feel good about yourself. Feel good about the world. Mm -hmm. It is your right to feel good about yourself. It is your right to feel good about the world. It is your right to see the very best in the world. It is your right to be the beacon of positivity. To be the one that other people see as a role model, as an influencer, as a person that they want to emulate and they want to think like. That is a beautiful thing and that is your destiny. And whether you fully realize it or now, people are watching, people around you know, even if they think they don't know, they do know. You'll be surprised who's starting to come around right now. People are coming around to who you are and expressing yourself is a beautiful thing. That was great. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> Very nice. And I think that's really good as far as like reminding us. I mean, because it's really easy 
to to be in the in the middle of the woods right now and in the middle of everything the maybe it feels like quicksand or whatever it's like oh poor me and being a pity party and and all this and it's like you know it, whatever we're thinking and that's what's so powerful right now whatever we are thinking and emotionally pulled into that's what we're constantly creating so if you're if that's what you want to see your situation as because remember it's your choice it's completely your choice how you want to see your situation and you know I've seen people all the time from my point of view they're in the depths of despair I mean this is a horrible situation they're in but they're still positive they're still you know they're they're seeing their world in a different way and because of that they are able to move beyond that but if you'll constantly see yourself as in this pity pit 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 you know and horrible things and everything bad happens to me and everything well look what you're doing you're just that's where we are our thoughts are so powerful like like kai was saying that gap is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller between thinking and manifesting that's why we get these instant manifestations because we had to learn that we this is us doing this because how many times i mean we didn't know that but, you know not that long ago that we were aware that we became aware that we're the ones creating everything you know we thought it was just happening to us and that was a nice happy thought just to be i get this visual of a well this is a horrible visual <laughs> <laughs> okay what is it <laughs> Okay, those of you that live in the country will understand this, but a little fat, happy tick. <laughs> it's full, it's fat, it's it's just happy kicking its feet around. Okay, those of you that aren't don't experience ticks will not understand that. I don't know who needed that. <laughs> that is not something that I but you know, we when I okay, those of you in the country, you understand ticks are not a happy thing to deal with. <laughs> we do not like ticks. <laughs> we have them. I, I was just outside last I was planting some things over the weekend and I came in, I had nine ticks on me. I'm like, come on. <laughs> I that was not happy. I don't like that. <laughs> so but I, I, I digress here, but <laughs> um but for some reason that's like a, it's it's something that to one person could be really disgusting, but to another person, they're a very happy camper, you know, <laughs> and they're just very happy in their place and their, and what's going on. So um, it's, it's to each his own and their perspective and what's going on there and how you choose to see it. Um, where was that? Oh, gosh. Okay. Anyway, but that is exactly it. It's like looking, if we look at our situations, I love how you say, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky to be here. I'm so lucky that this is where I'm at at this time, that I do have these opportunities, you know, and then that opens everything up. And when you said you relax, that's, I bet that's the, the key. That is the big key right there is the relaxing with it. Because so many times we want to get into that mechanics of manifesting and it's like, you know, I, I do this one, two, three, four, five, six. I do all these steps and it will work. And I'm going to keep checking in on all these steps. And how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? And I was told a very long time ago when I was first kind of, I don't even know my process of waking up, but when it was one of the earlier messages I got and it stuck with me all this time, because we're talking probably 30 years ago, maybe. You know, it's it's been quite a while um, where someone was asking about just that thing. How do I manifest and how do I, you know, I want to keep, I want to, I want to know that something's happening. I want to know that it's working. And the person said, imagine your, you know, when you put this out there, I think imagine it like a, a rosebud. It's a bud, you know, and it's going to open. Okay. And when it's fully open, then that's when it will be manifested. All right. But it takes, it's, it's got to go through its own growth process. It has to go through its own thing. But if you're sitting there picking back the, the petals, checking on it, are you there? Are you working it? Are you doing it? Are you actually going to be a rose? What happens to that rose? What happens to that rosebud if you keep picking it apart? It's going to die. It can't handle, it can't have you doing that to it. And so it's the same thing. It's like you, you go in with gratitude. And I feel like, Maybe somebody's saying, I don't know how to be in gratitude. 
it's really, really easy. Just say, I am grateful for, and just start filling in the blank. And it might be tiny, tiny things, tiny, tiny things at first. And then those that will lead to something else, <clears throat> which will lead to something else. Because as soon as you start opening that heart to be grateful and you're looking for what you're grateful for, then it will start finding more things. You will start seeing that rather than all the yuck. You know, as long as you see the yuck, then that's all you're going to see. But I am grateful for. And see how my voice even changed when I did that? It went to a heart voice. I am grateful for maybe finding that penny on the sidewalk. Yeah, I don't, it's some, it, I am grateful for, I have a roof over my head. I have food in my refrigerator. You know, it, it could be things, well, these are, these are things that we all have. These are things that are, we take for granted, you know, whatever. They, they are always there. But that's where you start. I mean, we are lucky, like Kai was saying, half the world may not have that. We are lucky when we do. Okay, good. So let's be, so I am grateful for, and then relax. After you have put all that out there, because the law of attraction, it is a universal law. It it has to happen. When you are putting out that vibration, then that vibration has to come back in kind. It has no choice. It's not like there's a person out there going, okay, well, you've been a good person. So I think maybe I'll let you have some of that stuff. Um, but you, I don't know if you really mean it. So I, you know, I saw some of the things you did the other day and I just don't know. So see, it's not, it's not that these, this is universal energy. This is energetic. It's, it's not people discerning and making up their minds and controlling anything like that. This is an energetic world. We are energetic beings. And when we put that energy out there, it attracts the exact same energy to come back. It has to, it has no choice. And so, so there's whoever needed that kind of an explanation. I don't know why I have to keep justifying that, but anyway, that's where my things come from. I feel you, I can feel sometimes what you're wanting, what you're needing, whatever. And so um, anyway, that's where that comes from. <laughs> I love you, whoever that is. Boy, there's something here. Ooh, okay, I love you. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, wait a minute. Sorry, there was something I was scanning through the questions before we got yeah. on, and you were talking about this triangle. Okay? Yes. Uh, going through, and someone has a question about that, um, yeah. wanting to know more about that because they're seeing it in meditation. They're seeing it in different things. They're like, what is this? I don't understand. Can you explain it more? Yeah, I can I can definitely explain it more from a concept and from personal experience of of just something that's consistently happening with me. I've been waking up in the middle of the night. It's usually between 3 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. And <laughs> my room's dark. <laughs> and on top of that, I have an eye mask, so it's dark. But I'm seeing bright, bright light to the point where it wakes me up and I, for a second, I think it's morning. And then I think, wow, the morning came quite fast. Wow, okay, I'm kind of ready to start the day. And then it, then it, then it dawned on me, oh, wait. And then I look and it's dark, but the light is still there. And then I'm realizing that the, the light isn't there in my physical reality. The light is there in my non-physical reality. And I'm bridging the two realities right now. And then the light is calling me. So rather than judging, Rather than thinking this is not so, this is crazy, anything like that, I've now allowed myself to just accept it and understand that if something is showing itself to you, something that may be odd, something that may be interesting, but whatever is showing itself to you, explore. So what are you going to do when this bright light is coming to you? I'm a type of active person. I'm not really a passive. I take action when things come to me, so I go into the light. And as I go into the light, I feel myself opening up and I'm going into this light. And as I get further in the light, every single time, I'm feeling a triangle. And it, it's pulsating energy and the size is changing, but I'm feeling my way through it. And it's speaking to me in, in a way where it's just giving me messages, not linearly in words, but I'm feeling everything all at once. 
and to this is the gateway into the new world. This is where we're progressing. We're speaking right now all together through this and going in it together and guiding and helping and feeling love through this. And in that channel, this is where we're headed. This is our destiny. This is everything. And we're crossing through this right now, right, right now is the purpose of all this wild coronavirus stuff is the purpose to purpose has been to calm down the earth, to give the earth some time to heal, to stop the pollution, to stop the aggression, to bring things to a halt and allow people to go back within to do a reset button from the chaos and the craziness and the pulls and the polarity to now withdraw back in, in a healed earth, in a grounded earth, drop the baggage and go into the new earth. And it sounds so simple when you just imagine it from those visuals that everything else is just noise. Mm -hmm. Everything else is just buzzing, distracting. It's part of that old 3D world that's all around. You don't need, a, you don't need to be part of any of that. Just feel the guidance from your heart and understanding in this reset period, this is the incubator of your greatness. This reset period is the period where you are going to experience tremendous, tremendous transformation. It's what it's for. It's a shifting of thoughts. It's a shifting of beliefs. It's a shifting into a more beautiful world. And I've had a lot of personal validation too. It's like we started this whole spiritual thing and I changed a lot. I'm not the same person that I was when I was, when I was the little boy or the teenager. I mean, I didn't know much about spiritual. I didn't know anything about what I'm talking about now. Nothing. <laughs> and I've changed so much over these last few years. And I had fears. Would my family accept me? Would some of my, you know, personal relationships that I had for all these years accept me? And now as part of this, I didn't need to worry about any of that. All the worrying would do would be create more worry. And I see now the law of attraction, what it's done. Worrying about that actually creates more worry. But allowing yourself to just let yourself free and show yourself to who you are without any worries whatsoever about any judgment about anybody, just being free, they come around. And I didn't even have to worry about my family. In fact, now with my mom and dad, they're like, we're watching these. We love it. This is amazing. We're so proud of you. I'm like, we get it. We love hearing it. It's lifting our spirits. I had this amazing conversation with my dad about luck. He was in Vietnam and he had so many experiences happen to him where everybody else didn't make it and he made it. And there was something in him that was luck. And we talked about the higher self concept and we talked about this and it was just, it was music to my heart and music to my ears and it connecting with my family in such a natural way. And it came by not worrying about it. It, it, it came through. We're going through that triangle now together. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm, I'm so grateful. And these conversations were a big part of it in actually accelerating it. I think in the sharing and the acceleration and the connecting to everyone that's listening and sharing their energy while they're listening. It's a connection of everybody that's in the chat. And they're sharing because that, that's a lot of encouragement to us when we see the chat lighting up and we're trying to catch and there's so much action there. And, and it's just interesting. And it's just so much to be grateful for right now as we head in through this. So that's the, the energetic triangle that I've been seeing. It's, it's a metaphor for a gateway. It's something that's proved to be enormously beneficial and beautiful and a, a point of tremendous gratitude for me. And we're all going through it. Mm -hmm. Very good point. We are all going through it. So we're all helping each other through it. Something you said there is, is reminding me of another question. I scanned the questions beforehand. I'll go through and I can pick some out here and, and specifically here in a minute if we want to. Um, but one of the questions, and this has to do with what you were just saying, is asking like, because we talk a lot about being our, your authentic self. And um, and they were someone was asking how how can you be your authentic self? What is it? You know, what does that mean and everything? And I feel like what you just said about you're growing up and then now you're here and you were worried about uh, how you'd be accepted, how you would be seen. And but then you did it anyway. You just were yourself and you were you didn't worry. 
And then that's, and, and others come around and we've talked about this several times in the show, you know, you just be you, you do what is right for you and it ripples out. And without our effort, it just ripples out and others, if it's right for them, if it's what they want to do, they will, you know, they'll, they'll listen, they'll whatever they, you know, it's not like everybody has to be like us. That's not it. But it's just, you know, all the worries that you had melted away, you know? And so that is so gorgeous. That is so wonderful. And I'm so excited that they listen. <laughs> just That is so fascinating. Um, but, but another, you know, that's all, I mean, I'm, but I don't know how better to say you just be you. I don't know. Is there a better way of wording that, you know, to be your authentic self? It's not trying to be who you think others want you to be. It's who in your heart. It's operating from the heart. Yeah, the mind is in there. It ha you know, you, authentic you, may be a very analytical person. That's okay. That is perfectly okay. It's just let your heart guide you in, in what you do. Don't let the brain get so involved. It's like, well, this person expects me to be like this or something like that. I have to act this way for them. Just be the you that makes you, oh, they're saying the bliss. What brings you bliss? What what makes you happy? What what makes you light up? You know, the, the, when you are expressing that, that is you. That is who you are. You know who you are. It's, it's when your heart sings, you know, and then that's what makes you happy. They keep going back to bliss. So that's a big word. Um, what and then we'd say that a lot as far as like when you want to know what it is that you're supposed to do. And we say, well, do what brings you bliss. Do what brings you joy. That's why we're here. And then in that process of doing that, see the energy just lights up. It just, so you are being your authentic self at that time when you are doing that. And then that makes your energy just expand and expand and expand and able to shoot out and ripple out to whoever it resonates with. And that's what we're looking for. That's what you're looking for. That's, Actually, you're not even looking for it. You're just doing it. You're just being it. And these things just happen. And one day you'll turn around and you're going, oh, my gosh. Wow. I was just doing my thing. I was just doing what made me happy. I was just doing, you know, and, and then all of a sudden all these things started changing and shifting. I wasn't even aware of it. I would see that's what you want. You just want your focus to be, you know, just be here. I'll guarantee you others are being affected. They're going to be affected whatever way you, you put your energy out there. So it just, that's, that's your choice again. What, how do you want your, they're saying, how do you want your legacy to be? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I, listened, I listened to something really interesting last night. Um, but I think it's, it's kind of on topic and I had a lot, I really admired what I heard. And I really like Elon Musk, um, for what he's doing. It, it is so difficult to just run one company and, and to run Tesla and have, you know, basically having the concept of, of living in a world where you have natural free energy running and you're not killing the environment and we're able to have everything that we need just from the sun, having it in cars having it in our homes, having that natural free energy. Okay, that in and itself is a really beautiful thing. And that person should be rewarded in our society. But it's also his mission to go to Mars and give humans the opportunity to go to a different place and have a secondary plan if something is not going right with the Earth and give us more options and opening us up to other galaxies, universes, who knows what the future. That's just such big thinking. It's easy to think big, but he, he actually moves forward with it. So, and then he went and he talks about Neuralink and artificial intelligence and basically being able to hook up sensors to this new company that can bring back eyesight, that can bring back uh, paralysis, that can bring back any disorder that has to do with the brain. It can reverse it through cooperating with artificial intelligence. So I'm always interested. Artificial intelligence is an important topic for me. It comes up a lot as we talk about the spiritual ramifications and then the connections to it. So I'm always researching. So last night he was on Joe Rogan. So I was like, ah, this is great. Love Joe Rogan. He talks about a lot of the concepts that we do. He's very mainstream, but
but he's also curious about the nature of things and questioning and brings on very interesting guests. So I'm so excited. They're both on. This is the second part of the interview. And Elon Musk told me something. He spoke of something that was really, really cool. And Joe Rogan's like, so, you know, you have your billionaire or whatever. I saw you tweet that you're selling your houses. Like, why are you selling your houses? You're a billionaire. Why are you selling? Did you like lose your mind or something? Because he said something about the stock and everybody was coming down really hard on him. He's like, well, no, I just kind of thought about myself. And, you know, knowing the type of personality that I have, if I was to build my own dream house from scratch, I probably obsess about every little detail and spend a lot of time thinking about the marble and the helicopter pad and how the bedroom connects to this and how that goes to that. And I'd be putting a lot of my attention and focus into that naturally. That's just the way they am. And then I thought maybe it's maybe it's a better idea to spend my energy focusing in on how we can make it to Mars, about how us as a civilization civilization can advance. And I was like, wow. What what a what a great way to think. Instead of it's first of all is knowing yourself and knowing that you have a tendency to get lost in details. And I do too. When I'm on a project, I'm just in and I get I'm just in it and I'm locked in and I can just go into it. I have to pull myself away when I'm into something because it's very intense and it's so much passion. And and first knowing yourself, right? That you can go down this rabbit hole and then understand who you're serving with what you're doing. Are you choosing to spend your time doing work, doing recreational activities and doing different things that just serve only you? Or do you serve like a few people? Or can it impact maybe a country? Or or can it impact all of humanity? And anybody that elevates their thinking to undertaking a passion, a hobby, a career, any ounce of their time with something that has a a net impact in the future about helping humanity and doing their part, their little piece to help humanity. For that, I I, I really offer them praise and and a big part of my heart for thinking like that. And there's I know there's a lot of you out there that that if you're not thinking that already, the momentum is going and, and you are starting to think that way, thinking about not only serving yourself, but thinking about how you can contribute to humanity and how you can be more of a guide and a leader and a contributor and thinking about the collective. And I just thought that really, that was something that was really resonating when I hear somebody that's being selfless and applying their skills and talents to advancing humankind. It was pretty cool, pretty cool thing to hear and, and listen to. And I want to support people like that in the world and, and their companies and their products. So everybody, if you can buy, think about buying a Tesla, buy a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> in the future at some point. <laughs> well, and like you said, it's a wonderful use of the energy. And I mean, he's he's made it to where, and I've seen that with other people. Sometimes they make it to this point and then they're like, but I know there's more. I mean, what, is this it? You know, this can't be it. Then that's when they start waking up spiritually. They start expanding and growing. And then they start using their energy and their influence and their money and whatever to start moving into these other worlds. And any one of us can do that. You know, it doesn't take being a billionaire to do it. It's just wonderful as a role model to see when someone does that. And uh, but every single one of us can do that. And and it's when we when we are living our true selves, like you said, know thyself. I think that comes from some very deep, does that come from the Bible or a parable or something? I mean, we've heard that forever. Know thyself, you know, Greek, <laughs> you know, what was that? Greek philosopher, I think was one of yeah, the, so, yeah. It's one of those. yeah, it's like, they, this goes way back. I mean, so this isn't new thought. <laughs> Mom was always saying that I'm, uh, it's like I'm re rediscovering, uh, old information. It's like this is always this stuff is always moving around and it's always uh, coming back. So it's not like this is anything new. It's just we're remembering, and we are able to apply it now. We have we've created a situation and situations that can help us understand it better. You know, it's like it's one thing in theory, a whole other thing in practicum. <laughs> we want to put it into practice. So we have created wonderful, beautiful situations to help us remember all these wonderful things. Know thyself. There's something else to that. It almost came in. I, I'm going to add my own thing. 
<clears throat> know thyself and thy shall be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I feel like, um, and I don't want something I said earlier to be misunderstood. Um, it's like you, when I said be your authentic self and do what makes, you know, what is right for you and what makes you happy, that doesn't mean, you know, you step away from all responsibilities. I, I can feel that, you know, it's like we, there is a way to do this within, you know, if we have families, we have, we have children, we have, we have others depending on us, things like that. That doesn't mean just walk away and leave everybody. That's not at all what I'm saying. Um, and I hope nobody, you know, misunderstood that. Um, it's it's about being you and being happy within yourself and who you are within these relationships and who you are with, you know, and how to be your authentic self. And by doing that, then you are giving others permission to do the same. As long as you're here going, well, I have to be like this for you know, and I have these expectations on me and I have to act like this and I have to do that. That's the example that you're setting for everyone around you. And so then they also have to do that. And so then we have a world of people with masks on and, and just playing parts that they don't even want to play because they're not for themselves they're for everybody else. And so it's about yeah. shedding the masks and, and being, who we really are, and then that in turn gives everybody else permission to do the same, and then we have this wonderful, real relationship with others. And you're yeah. you're, you're over there just trying. To, what do you have to say yeah. about that? And I think something that is organically connected to that and interesting. So, it, some may say, "Okay, I want to be myself." In situations like that, it may be hard because I I don't want to hurt someone else. Yeah. Maybe if I expressing what I really feel inside, mm -hmm. they may take it and they may not be happy with what I have to say. Right. So then here comes something that I think can be very helpful in connecting and communicating and staying authentic to yourself when there's when there may be resistance. And it's to come from a place where you're not beginning the conversation with that point that you're feeling some type of friction with that your feelings will tell you in these situations. I'm uh, authentic self, authentic self, authentic self. Oh, Ooh, little something here. Oh, so I'm feeling something authentic self, just like, eh, Oh, what? And then the thoughts, then the, the hecklers and the ego are like, you better watch it. There's a little trouble could be here, you know, tread carefully. Okay. So that happens. But when you're in that situation, Again, the best possible way to connect it is if you're feeling that friction is to begin that situation connecting from a place of love, a place of positivity, and coming from a place of, listen, and, and giving something, I, I appreciate all that you do. I, you know, starting with a, a complimentary something, starting with a positive something, giving a positive first. And then, and I appreciate your open-mindedness, or I always appreciate how you're so supportive. That's why I just want to talk to you about this, because this is important to me, and I could really use some of that support that you give. It could be one example, right? But it should be whatever organically you feel connected to the person about. And start from a place of compliment, giving love, exchanging positive energy. When you're feeling that resistance, walk into it. Exchange the positive energy as a gift and then allow your truth to come through. And that will help get through some of that, some of that turbulence that's in there, that heart energy that expands and breaks through it. And it's kind of funny in the level two, when I teach the business class, we actually, we actually go through the, how powerful compliments are in life and how being a complimentary person serves not only them, the person that you're giving a, a true compliment to of something that you actually like, but it also helps you because a vibrational exchange when you're giving compliments. Like we all know somebody that's just so complimentary, like they're really good at compliments. Next time you come in contact with that, it's good to borrow some things from that person that resonates on you because by being a little bit more complimentary people and expressing the positivity that we see in others, we're providing this vibrational balancing and karmic exchange that elevates our vibration and works through what may be perceived as karma in our lives. 
And uh, yeah, there's a there's a practitioner in Australia who's a who's an expert at compliments, and it's not like he tries. It is just he is so good at saying the right thing to people at the right time to make everybody feel great. And it's it's he's very connected to his heart energy. His name is John McClucky for anybody wanting to know. Um, but so, 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 so good at it. And um, when I experiencing those things, as I go through my week, I love to bring them up because anything that was significant to me during my week to bring it up to everyone and just say what I learned from it. And I always learn from that too. I'm like, wow, it's always good to start any situation and see how can I raise the vibration before I get into the actual meat of any topic, especially if it's any topic where there may be friction or may not be uh, something that's easy or something that's on your mind or people that any type of situation where there may be resistance and, and, and leading through luck, leading through making them feel great leading through an exchange of positive energy to begin things can all serve us really well, especially, oh, I see, especially for kids, Jennifer. Yeah. How great is that? Like a kid will just eat it up. If you're a little, they do something, they step out of line and you have that impulse of like, don't do that. I'm going to wait. No, now Susie, <laughs> I love how clean you are. You do such a good job of cleaning. This doesn't look very clean. We can do better. <laughs> <laughs> Enough reinforcement like that. I think it'll do Susie really well. Now, I've never had that conversation. I don't have children, but I'm sure a lot of you out there. Have. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, okay, that was a segue into, into one of the questions. Someone wants to know if you're single. I am single. <laughs> so yes. we'll, do that. we'll just get that one answered right away. Yes. <laughs> single, no kids. Yeah. <laughs> single and ready to mingle. <laughs> you're mingling now mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely um yeah and, and and the thing about compliments i mean they have to be real yeah. you know this, they, they can't be just surface and and just saying something just because because people can see right through that you know when somebody gives you a fake compliment you know yeah. you don't like it it doesn't feel good so make it it's true from the heart really mean it and and it is john is just he's got that down he is just so gorgeous. And you don't even know until afterwards it's happening. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, I feel so good. And then you realize what just happened. <laughs> it's like, he's, he, but that's John, you know, and that, but he's truly coming from his heart. And, and there's a process to this actually of, of, and I wasn't expecting going into this conversation like deep, but there are mechanics to this where if you get into a habit of noticing, like when you notice somebody or you have a conversation with somebody, there's obviously when there's things that stand out in the conversation that you go, oh, wow, that's interesting. You know, you think to yourself, like, oh, that's cool. I never thought about that. Like, oh, wow, they're pretty smart. You know, these things will pop into your head, but you just don't act on those impulses for whatever reason. Oh, I don't want to be a kiss ass. Oh, you know, I don't want to give them a big head. You know, then some of these things can come in and block that. But these things that are coming through that are natural and positive, they're meant to be shared. And, and it could be anything. Like, you look at, someone's hair and looks nice. So like, oh, you got the hair. It's like nice to give the compliment. I like giving compliments um, that are based off, off of conversations when people are actually just saying something that's stimulating or interesting, getting me to think in a different way. I especially love those types of compliments. It's very easy to compliment on physical appearances and things like that. But conversational compliments, I take more pride in those. I think um, because for me, they're just, it's more interesting and fun. And I think for a lot of people, they resonate more. Some people like with the physical, some people love it. Some people don't. Some people, they give them a physical compliment. They just kind of blow it off. Mm -hmm. But when you're complimenting something organically, it's conversational about the way that a person is thinking. I feel like it lights them up a little more. And I feel good about myself because I'm being present and I'm allowing that positivity that I'm feeling from our higher selves meshing, allowing it to flow. If that makes any sense. I don't know. I'm going off on tangents now. <laughs> You're acting like me. Yay. <laughs> I love it. Now you know how that, yeah, it's like, ah, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> no, that well, was great. feeling warm all of a sudden. I don't know. I talked about the single thing. Now I'm feeling warm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
on my heart. I feel like I have warm energy. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that love, huh? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, there's something over here. I mean, it, the very first question on our list of questions. If we, we we're going to shift a little bit, but it's it's really kind of funny. Um, and someone's asking about mom and. Uh, the YouTube videos that are out there that, that she did and her thing. And they're wondering, how did she do that? You know, because she was an older woman and how, and, and most older people don't, they're not, they're very technically challenged or they can be, and they don't like these things and, and stuff. They're just wondering, how did she do that? Well, I want to tell you a story. <laughs> um, most of the videos that are on YouTube were, she was filmed. Okay, so she was fine in front of the camera. She could do that. She was, you know, you saw her in lectures, things like that. That was, she was very, very at home doing that. And, um, but if you, she hated YouTube. She hated, um, oh. not YouTube, she hated Skype. She hate. she would have, I don't know if Zoom was out then yet or not, but mm -hmm. she didn't like any of these things like this. She hated the way she looked. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, and then plus, you know, we have to, we're going back. Let's see how many years. Um, well, let's see here. Let's see. She's been past five years. So between five and 10 years ago, you know, when, when, when she was, you know, she was doing that. So we're looking at the advancements we've made in the technology of these things. So you can imagine there were a lot of problems, you know, and the cameras were not that great and stuff. And so, and she just didn't, she was, she was technically challenged. She didn't like those things. She wrote her books on the computer. So the computer was her friend. She loved the computer uh, because it resembled a typewriter. She loved the typewriter. The first books were written on typewriters. Um, so just see, that's where she was. Now, as far as but she, the, the videos that are out there, she was filmed for those. And somebody else was doing that. And then, then that got her on there. See, then they, she did it herself on YouTube. <laughs> so just, just want to make sure you understand that she had people behind her. She had a team. She had she had others doing this, which is wonderful. That's how that's what makes everything work. Just like we have a fantastic team. And I felt this early on. I really wanted to to give thanks to our team because we have the best team ever. And the ones that are making this happen. I see Jenny's name in here a lot. Jenny, love you. Jenny and Summer in the office and they're they're answering questions. They're helping keeping things ticking in the back and stuff. We can't do these things without these people. And I know we have Laura over there helping with the social media and and then um, Steph. I'm not sure if Steph's on Zendesk help, helping with questions there and everything, but see, we have a team that that does all this. We don't we we get to be the ones out here in front. <laughs> so um, but we could not do it without all these wonderful, wonderful people doing the jobs and their wonderful, wonderful work in in the background you know that you don't ever see what is it like the wizard of oz you know it's like don't pay attention to the ones behind the curtain because they're the ones doing everything <laughs> so, um just wanted to say i'm very very grateful for all these wonderful people that help us we have a huge hugely wonderful team and they all are fantastic so anyway so that was the secret behind dolores you know she she once you put her in front of a camera or once you put her on a stage and she got into that mode, it was just diamonds. <laughs> you know, she, she entered that and all that wonderful, wonderful knowledge would come out of her. And that was where she felt very, very comfortable. So that's why you are resonating with her. That's why, because she is speaking from the heart. She is speaking from her true being at that point. She was doing absolutely what she loved. Oh, goodness, and I feel her right now. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Any? Oh, boy. She's right here. Anyway, all you have to do is think about someone. I, I saw another question, and they were asking about some guide or something and wondering how they can call that person in to be to help them. Well, you just answered your own question. You just called them in. You know, just like that. I just spoke about mom. I just had love for her. I was thankful for her. I was, I was, and that's all you have to do. You just think about them and it brings them in. You know their energy. You know, uh, and it, do, it doesn't have to be that technical. You just connect and you just, they're, they're saying it's not even that technical. It's not even complicated. You just open your heart. You just think, and you just ask. The big thing is A-S-K. 
ask. Ask for them to come in, and they will. They will. I don't know. That was okay. That I'm, I know we went way over here, but I wanted to at least get some questions answered. <laughs> um, okay, Kaya, I feel like you're. Um, I'm ready for questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay, since we got the big one for you. And I want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day that is coming up. And I want to especially say happy Mother's Day to my mom. Love you, mom. Very sweet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just zoning out thinking about my mother as you were talking about Dolores. So it was a motherly thing, a connection. Well, that that's that's absolutely that's great, you know. And even if your mother has passed, like my, you can still because I just felt her. I mean, that was very strong. I don't know if anybody else felt her, um, but we do. We we know what they feel like, and they. All, I felt such a heart energy, and and my mother, when I feel her, it is that it's just so much love. And so, and whether they're in physical or whether they're in spirit, you can still connect right with them, and you can still share that love with them. So. Uh, everybody. Oh, they're saying, yeah, everybody. I love that. Thank you, Kaya. Let's all just take a moment and express and feel our love for our mothers. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come in. <laughs> Making a way for us to be here and thank you for the guidance and, and your part in us You know, there's these are always cooperative relationships that we have that we choose Choose to be in we choose our parents. We choose our avenues We choose those that are around us believe it or not. We choose our families <laughs> And that, and that's why sometimes they're, you know, we choose them for big reasons. We choose them for lots of learning, but we also choose them for lots of love and support to guide us and help us on our journeys. And then as we're in here, we have contracts and choices of everybody else around us. So I am grateful for all those that are around me and the family that I have, that I made by choice. And I'm learning so much from. I cry. Oh my gosh. Okay. Thank you for that reminder, Kaya. My pleasure. Let's see. This this is a really interesting question. Oh, and, like yeah, and this is. I mean, this is we're we're changing. We're going to change the subject here and go off in this other direction. But I think this is really good and it's really, really um, um, representative of where we are now. I love where we are and where we've traveled from. But this question, uh, it's from Tony. And it's how do transgender people occur? Is it karma related or something else? And that is such a great question. And it has, it's a, there's a lot of different facets to it, mm -hmm. okay? But one thing that's happening right now is, and, and part of what I think it is, I'm, in fact, maybe, let, let me lead up into it, first of all. Um, there are several things that can play here. Um, we, we come from many, many places. Before we come into this life, we are all over the universe in different planets and different costumes, right? In different places. And some of these planets have both genders or no gender. And we're coming from that into a planet that has two genders. Well, that can be a little discombobulating, you know? And it's like trying to pick one when you're not used to being any or you're used to being both. Okay, so there's one explanation. Another one is we live many, 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 many lives. You know, whether, you're, whether you know, if we look at linear, let's just do that right now for simplicity's sake. And if you've been one gender for a lot of times, you've got to have balance. And that's the whole thing about 
all of this. You know, we're, we're all looking for the balance and moving and, and getting to our state of balance with everything. And so if we have been one gender for many lives, then it's time to shift gears and we've got to experience the other gender. Well, that can be very uncomfortable. If you've been maybe a woman for eons and then now you're a man, you feel like a woman in a man's body. And that can be very discombobulating. And so sometimes the, it's an effort to try and go back, you know, to what is comfortable, what you know. That's all that's happening there. All right. It's just, it's just that kind of stuff. It's like, but this is who I am and stuff. Now, another thing I feel like is happening now is as these hearts are opening and, and just getting so wide open, we're losing some of these, uh, these stereotypes of the masculinity and femininity. They're both moving closer and closer to center. And so we, we don't have those rigid lines anymore. And you'll have, masculine females and feminine males. I mean, that's where as people are getting closer and closer to where it's really, we're, we're losing a lot. I don't know, it, losing isn't the best word, but but it's like those things are dropping. Those, those identity things, I'm a man or I'm a woman, you know, it's like, that's, it's just, I am me. And we're just being, I think that's part of the authenticity, you know, being who you are. It's like you might be a man, but feel like a woman. Well, that's just you're expressing femininity through the male. See, that's this is all new expression. This is really cool. I, I really enjoy seeing how we're finding other ways to express ourselves without it just having to be gender. So um, anyway, that those are my thoughts on it. What do you yeah, think, Kai? Mm -hmm. It's interesting that my thoughts were were very, very similar. Like the initial thoughts that I have is um, we're entering now as we're expanding our consciousness and we're expanding our understanding of who we are and starting to feel like all that we've been and all that we will be and realize that we're not confined. Your real self is not confined. I'm not confined to just the male Kaya that I am here in this life. I've been everything. I've been multi-gender, I've been transgender, I've been female, I've been man, uh, wife, husband, child, uh, expanding out in, in societies and planets and systems where they had three genders, four genders. I mean, the thing that we have here in Earth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are the other genders? Um, well, I could do that if I, if I get into like a deep channeling state. I, 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 my brain just went, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. There is a consciousness where there's multi genders, and it's not just two. There's there's multiple, and the way that they interact with each other is is is, is amazing, and and it's a, it's a beautiful thing to explore. And exploring that civilization is worthy of another time when we can dedicate a lot of energy to that. But um, getting back to the Earth experience, just now we're starting to really open our hearts and and accept this. You know is we look back like 10, 20, 30 years ago, it's like the earth consciousness. Some, some individuals may be murdered if they, if they reveal this, right? They're, they're hiding who they are and they're just very, very fearful. And now, isn't it beautiful that we're starting to see people express who they really are without any sort of old, outdated judgments of this is the way the construct is supposed to be, probably made by some really, really old-fashioned, outdated people that are stuck in their ways that are making that that belief system and trying to jam it down the throat of consciousness. Now we're seeing an opening. And I think it's led by the youth. As, as we look into teenagers and we see some of their programming on, on television, and I, and I see some of these in YouTubes, and there's definitely this huge openness to expressing your gender in whatever way you wish. And it's, it's an acceptance. And in a lot of ways, that's why I marvel some of the new generation, the indigo children, the, the hybrid children that are coming through, and how beautiful and accepting they are, how technologically advanced they are, and how they are moving us forward in, in a really beautiful, big way. They are our future. They are progressing. And Sarah said something really interesting. She said, <laughs> I play this I play your live streams all the time, and my 11-year-old just loves when you speak, Kaya. <laughs> the 11-year-old loves your concepts, and, and she said either the 11-year-old or the 13-year-old is this amazing editor. She, she plays these clips mm -hmm. of the reality show in their house, and 
it's amazing. The editing is fantastic. It's like a reality show you'd see on TV with the sound effects and the jump cuts and all these different things. And I said, that was made by your teenager? That's better than a lot of the editors that I've worked at in the past. They're professionals in Hollywood. I'm not joking. Like, <laughs> it's showing the leaps that our children are having in this world and their acceptance and their love, their compassion. And, and it's beautiful to see them coming in the world with such open hearts and open minds and being so accepting. It's, it makes me feel really, really good. So those are my thoughts when I think of anything gender related is accepting, not trying, not trying to think that there's any one way or right way or wrong way because we've been already been everything. We just limit ourselves and try and see this is the only reality when everything is possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love what you're saying about the kids because that's reminding me, you know, when, when mom was doing all of her talks and she's talking about the three waves of volunteers and the first wave was like the trailblazer, the way shower. The second wave is coming in and, and just helping just deliver the energy. They're just conduits for the energy to just be and let the energy raise the vibration. The third wave were these children that you're talking about. And they were the ones coming in to show the rest of us how to be. They are showing us our own potential. And, they, and that's what they're doing because they come in knowing who they are. They come in with these abilities intact. And they, if, if they are in that environment where they can expand, expand and spread their wings, they will show us, you know, just who we can be. And that's what they've been doing. See, all these waves have been all for that purpose of raising the vibration of humanity to be able to do exactly what we're doing right now. You know, and I bet I bet so many of you have that you're know, resonating with that by uh, the volunteer energy, the volunteer vibration. And that's wonderful. And, you know, even if you don't, it's OK. Um, although I feel like if you're on here, you probably are one. But that's it's not like this is a secret society or this is an elite club or anything. It's the reason for the volunteers was to help everyone raise their vibration and all get to that same place. So I found uh, f several years ago, I found where it was like, I could, I could tell, you know, it's like, well, I didn't feel like a, vi a volunteer. You know, I was like, I've been here, I'm from here. This is how I am and stuff. But then I felt like there was this merging happening. There's something with the vibration and the, and the energies. And it was like, Oh, it seems like, I, and what I got was it was like the influence of this, that was the whole purpose was if we if they come in and they and they influence us and help us and raise our energy, then we are raising to our own to the, to the same abilities. So it's like so it may be difficult to see who is who and it doesn't matter. The thing is, is we're all raising and we're all opening to our potential. And that's what was the whole purpose. And then by doing that, it's all accomplishing. I know some people keep wondering, are we there? Are we doing it? Is it what is it working? Um, yes. Yes. We tipped the scales a while back and it's very definitely. That's why we're in what we're in. I think one of the first shows we did, Kaya said, OK, here we are. Green uh, what was it blue pill, red pill. You know, it's a choice. We are at that place. We created this. We did this because of all of this stuff the volunteers and everything. I mean, we may all be volunteers. I, well, we actually are because we came here. Everybody here is a volunteer, all right? But you may be here a while. You know, it's okay. That doesn't matter to get hooked up on all this. Oh, don't worry about all that stuff. You know, it's like I said, it's not this big social club or anything. It's These are souls that came in for a purpose. But along the way, we're also having experiences. OK, so it's it's not just about here. Here, I'm here to help you. It's nothing like that. I'm here. I'm doing my part and I'm learning my own things. I'm having my own experiences, too, to help me grow and expand. See, that's how it works. So so enjoy your time here and and get the most out of it. Uh, uh, OK, there's somebody. OK, get the most out of it. Um, I don't know what this is about speaking. Um, that's weird. Okay. I have, I have a, a tugging on the throat. Who else gets that? I want to know who else, who else feels these things. You'll feel the heart. That means there's a lot of love. Something love just happened. There's a high heart. That's really cool. I love the high heart when it gets involved. Uh, that means it's just, it's a whole other thing, an element of love when the throat, 
when you're feeling something, and sometimes to me it feels like a tugging on the throat, it means there's something you need to say or something that's happening that somebody it's like you're connecting with somebody and they need to say something. Okay. Um, I think some people may call that empathic, whatever. I don't know. I don't have a name for it. I don't, it doesn't matter to me to name it. It's, these are just things I feel and I'm connecting. So I don't know if somebody is wanting to say something along that line. Cause I, I feel like I have said my piece. <laughs> so, um, um, anyway, I'm just giving you permission. Um, and maybe by me asking if you feel that, maybe that's what that was. Um, you are exploring your abilities. This is These are your abilities. It, this is how we connect to each other. And we can understand what somebody else is feeling, what somebody else may be needing, what somebody else is doing, whatever. This is, this is how connected we are. I, isn't that wonderful that we can, because we are all one, guys. And as we keep lightening up more and more and more, we become more aware of that, just how much we are all one and we are all connected. And that this is one way of knowing that is when you can feel what somebody else is feeling. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Um, it's it can be a little daunting sometimes. But when you understand what it is, it's just like, OK, I'm just being asked to help. That's all, you know, and it might and, and just do whatever it is you feel prompted to do. And that's that's all you that's all there is. You know, it's not like you have to go on some big mission or anything. It's just it might be to say something to one person or whatever. It just just follow your heart there. Um, somebody somebody's going through some really cool transition things. I just know it's OK. You are perfectly normal. This is normal. OK, this is normal. And you're right on track. And I love you. I send my heart out to you. You've, you've chosen a wonderful path. This is your path. Just embrace it. Kaya, over to you. <laughs> I think I'm ready, ready for a question. Okay. Um, let's see, we have, we have some questions about QHHT. Um, well, here, um, and this is, this was addressed on another show. Um, so Diana is asking in any of Dolores' sessions, did anyone mention a virus like 2020? And we mentioned that I think on the very first show um, that I believe it's in the Convoluted Universe book three, there are some sessions where they were talking about viruses that they didn't say specifically this virus. They didn't say the coronavirus. They didn't say 2020, but they were describing the impact it would have and what to do and how it was like the media was going to blow it out of proportion. And it was, they're, they're really describing what it really is. So, and I think it was like on page 531 and it covered a few pages, something like that. So anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to go from memory here. So don't, if I'm wrong, please don't, it's okay. I mean, but it's, I believe it was Convoluted Universe book three. Sarah, can you correct me? Cause she's the one that pointed it out to me. So, um, uh, anyway, so yes, she was getting information and a lot of things like that, you know, they were getting information. I know that there's um, someone else was asking about, oh, about the earth changes and all these things that were predicted in Nostradamus. OK, I'll just go ahead and get the Nostradamus because over over the course of things, there have been a lot of different questions about that and coming from different directions. And and what what are we going to do when the ice caps melt? And what are we going to do here? And what are we going to do here? Well, those were predictions made by someone who was trying to put out you know, a warning to our time back. Let's see. She wrote those books in the in the 90s. So we're talking well, at least 25 years ago. OK, so 20, 25 years ago. And she was he. Nostradamus was talking to the humanity of that time. All right. He was like, I have to get this through to you. I have to help you to understand if you know the worst that can happen because of your actions, will you do something different? Will you change? That was his whole mission. That was his whole message is if I tell you the very worst that man can do, will you change? because this is the path you're on if you do nothing, all right? And so he displayed the absolute worst case scenario so that it would make an impression, all right? It was nothing set in stone. It is one of the possible futures that were set out at this nexus point 
from where they were. Okay. Now, and he, then he also went on to give my mother an assignment and told her that she must go around the world and lecture about this and get as many people to understand that this was his message. You know, if I tell you the very worst things that could possibly happen, will you do something? And so that's what she did. And he's like, and if you will meditate and if you will in group visualize peace, visualize these things like that, visualize the beautiful, you will shift your world. I'm buzzing all over. <laughs> and so that's what she did. She's like, because it's not like all of a sudden you go, you know, you don't go from one person meditating to, to two and three people meditating. Now it's now it's triple. No, it's trying. It's, it's you, you, you're coming, you're squaring and you're trining. I don't know what the word is when you get beyond those others. Um, but anyway, it, it, exp it becomes exponential. It's not just the number of people, then that's the, that's the, the magnitude it's doing. It's exponential. It's, it's squaring and, and multiplying upon itself every time those kind of vibrations were going out there. All right. So that was the assignment and that was what he, that was his ultimate purpose. That's what he wanted to do. Now, what is so gorgeous is that when the, the situations of September 11th, 2001 occurred, 9-11, that, you know, I was involved in those sessions. I wasn't one, of, I was never one of the subjects, but I was in the room sometimes when some of those sessions were being done and I was hearing these things. I was around all the time when mom was writing the books and she was coming back from sessions and telling me about these different prophecies and what they mean and everything. And I was having a hard time with that. All right, because it was all this doom and gloom. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I just had my daughter. She was a little baby sitting in her school, uh, her little swing, swinging. And my mother's telling me all the doom and gloom. And I look at my daughter and I'm like, but I just have, I have a hope of the world here. You know what I mean? I don't, I, I, I can't visualize a world like that. I don't even want to hear about a world like that when I just had this little baby. You know, I, I, it's like, I, I refuse to believe that I brought this little baby into that world. You know, and I, I had a really hard time with it. I didn't want to hear about it. I, I was like, uh, uh this doesn't, it doesn't jive with me. I, I don't want to go there. And so when 9-11 happened, um, my mother and my sister were on a trip. They were off lecturing and, and doing something and they were in route. They were trying to get back home. And um, I finally made contact and they were like, it's everything's okay. We're fine. We just want you to know everything's in the books. And I'm like, oh my gosh, really? And I, absolutely, the the um, the towers, the Pentagon, everything's in the book, you know, in the books and everything. So then I grabbed the books, I started reading. In fact, I was reading all three at once, and I'm going through there. And I even had like it was just the weirdest thing. Um, the TV was going at the same time sometimes because if you know back then, I mean, it was like everything was just, you know. It was, that's where I was, you know, I wasn't in this solid place now of not of tuning TV stuff out, you know, it's just like, I was watching that and everything was just, you know, uh, just freak out and stuff. And I'd be reading something and then it would, they'd say it on the news. And I'm, are you kidding me? And it was just that, that's how in sync it was. But, and so that got me through it. Cause I was just like, I don't understand this. This is so wild that this, he saw all of this. Oh my gosh. So then I'm really motivated to read it. Now I'm going through it and I discover something completely different in these books. One, I saw that, okay, I see where we are. I see where we are right now in them. But then I could also see that we were not to the worst case scenario. We were, it was already curved. It was already shifting. We were not at that timeline. We were on a different timeline. So, and then we were going forward from there. But when mom passed, she was actually in the process of re of consolidating the three um, books, you know, the three trill, um, the volumes, the three volumes of Nostradamus that she did, because it has all of the quatrains were, were translated in there. She was actually in the process of putting it all into one book um, and did not get that accomplished yet they're saying so maybe that's something that could still be done but what she was finding in that process of doing that was that very same thing we had shifted the timeline we were on a completely different course and so those those prophecies they're happening on some timeline 
but not the one that we shifted to, the one that we are seeing. And so just because they're written in that book does not mean that we are going to see them because we shifted. We did what Nostradamus set out to accomplish. This was the whole goal. If I tell you, will you do something? Will you change it? We changed it. We changed it. We changed it big time. And that's what I kept seeing when I did read it, the books at that point. It's like, these aren't books of doom and gloom. They're books of hope. And that's exactly what they were saying. They told us, change, and you will change your future. We did. And that's why we're here. That's why we are here at this point. We're not in the World War III with the Antichrist and all that stuff. We chose not to go that way. We changed our course. We are here now going into this wonderful world of our choosing. And it's each and every one of us. And I can hear somebody going, but what is it? What, is, what are we going to see? Whatever you want to see. It's your manifestation. It's your creation. We are each creating our own new world. But I want to guarantee you we are on a different course. I love those books for that message. I love those books for, the, for what they showed us. But if you want to hang on to all of those things that he was seeing, you will definitely, you can, and that's completely your choice. If that's the world you want, you can get to that world. Okay? That's just by focusing on it and getting pulled into that drama. You can be there with it. Okay? So that's just where, but I feel like this is really what I feel as we as a humanity, we as a world global community, we chose not to go down that road. We chose this one. And that's, so kudos Nostradamus, kudos mom, you did your job well. Mission accomplished. And kudos to all of us. We did it. Okay. And, an and an interesting book too. Um, you know, now we're contrasting Nostradamus with your mom's book and the the three waves of volunteers. Maybe more of a book that um, is is more closely connected to a reality that we're entering. Would you say that? Absolutely. The three waves of volunteers is where, as she kept doing sessions, she was seeing these different. Because, like I said, people come from everywhere. They're all over. We live everywhere. We've been everywhere. We've been everything. That's that's experiences. That's what we do. That's what I mean, wouldn't it be boring if all we did was just, you know, <laughs> hop, hop, hop. And or if we had just one life even, <laughs> you know, but we're, it's about experiencing everything we can possibly experience to grow and expand who you know, our true being our truth so we can see everything from all these different sides and all these different viewpoints and and all these different universes and all these different things you know and so that's where we are everywhere we have been in all these different universes we have been on these different planets we have been in other places some of us have just been with source okay and so that's that's wonderful this is when um when this when the earth she's like she has her own reincarnation she has her own journey and that's i think it's easy to forget sometimes that we are uh, we are living we are guests on this beautiful living being you know this living being gaia is allowing us to be here and so that was this an agreement we had well we knew full well any agreements that that are made out there or contracts whatever you want to call them i think agreement sounds a little friendlier um, any agreements that we have with anyone, anything, it's all chosen before we come in. We are fully aware of what we're doing. And those are all in, in mutual respect and agreement, right? Okay, we, we make these agreements. And so we did that with the earth. The earth is saying, okay, I'll allow you to live on me. I'll allow you to be here with me, you know? Um, and there was probably something, I almost bet you there was something in that contract that said, but <laughs> if you start treating me, <laughs> Out of you know, with disrespect or whatever, I'm probably going to do something to to let you know that I'm here and and I you don't have to be here, <laughs> you know, something like that. So, um, and that's where sometimes we get some of these rumblings, maybe, <laughs> it's just to let us know, hey, Mother Earth is is very much making her voice heard, 
okay? Reminding us we are guests here. She allowed us to be here with her. And it's about working with her. But let's, but, but again, Mother Earth, Gaia has her own journey, has this, you know, that she's doing and she's growing and expanding and she's ascending and she's, we're all doing this. All beings are doing this, all right, in different forms, different states. I wouldn't be surprised if many of you have been pieces of Gaia, if you're, if you probably resonate very, very uh, heavily, very deeply with Gaia. You have been part of her. We can all do that. We can all take on facets of other other beings and other things. So uh, that's where that's coming from. So we can more more purely understand who she is. So she's doing her growth and her movement. And she was like, you know, the way humanity is right now, we're talking, um, like I said, back in the, you know, let's see. Well, my daughter is 36 years old. So that gives you an idea about when she, my mother was doing these Nostradamus sessions. Okay. So that's, see, all that's very close. And it's like, uh, we have all these things happening. Humanity must change. All right. Humanity must change for this to move forward, for this to progress, for anything positive to happen from this. So um, that's when my mother started noticing that people, this was in the 80s, that my mother started noticing people were coming in that had never been here before or had been, what I'm noticing now, it's like maybe they had been here, but it had been a very, very long time. It wasn't like they were just constantly being here. Okay. And then, so they were coming in and as she kept having more and she was getting similar stories. And so it's like she started noticing that there's, she called them waves only because they kind of had just similar, you know, it's like they're similar time frames. And that was determining wave is also as, as far as like characteristics. Okay. And so that was determining kind of to, to lock it into a time frame uh, is not really um, appropriate because it's more of what they were coming to do. And that's really more of what defined a wave. And I just said it all ago. The first wave were the trailblazers. They were the ones that had to forge the way for the others to be able to come in and easily follow. So you have to have some out there that are, you know, clearing the way for others to come in. And so then that's that was the first wave. The second wave were the ones there just to be, just to be here as a conduit of energy. And those are the ones that you'll see prevalently saying, but what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to do something. I want to do something. I got to be, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, and they don't want to, they're happy being at home. Hello. Look at this. Look at this. The second waivers probably created this, you know, <laughs> we're all at home you know, and stuff. They're very, very happy at home doing their things from home. That's, that's, a, and what I also noticed, a very cool thing I have noticed is many of them are in production work some kind of thing where they're where they're getting messages out. So a lot of this video work, a lot of you know broadcasting, a lot of that. So but that's not defining it. I'm just finding a lot are feeling very comfortable in that arena. So see again, it's about spreading energy. You know, they're conduit for energy. And so they just bring it in and and put it out. All right. Then the third wave are the younger ones. They tend to be the younger ones and they are here just showing us these are the this is who you really are. They're, they're just, they, they're, these souls, they've come from these other places and some directly from source. And they are not all, they weren't all bogged down with, with the heavy density of earth and the karma of earth. You know, they didn't, that wasn't here. They're coming in with like fresh energy and fresh. And so, you know, ideas, fresh outlooks and fresh ways of seeing things. And that was what's helping lift the vibration of humanity. You know, people are, we're always saying we got to help Mother Earth. Well, this is how we help Mother Earth is by helping humanity. The humanity had to change. Mother Earth is going to do her thing. She was doing it. It was just humanity is what was hurting, you know, is pulling it down. And as long and, and she really, oh, I'm hearing she really, you know, she wanted this to be a cooperative effort. Oh, this is really cool. I'm hearing from her right now. She wanted this to be a cooperative effort. And so in order to do that, humanity had to raise. She was doing her thing, you know, and she was very sad and disheartened by things that she was seeing that was being done to her. But that was part of the agreement. That's part of the, the learning process is, you know, I will let you live here. I'll let you be with me, you know, up to a point, you know. And so when it got to a point that was just a little more than she could handle, that's when she put out the call for help. And that's when the call went out for these volunteers to come in and help. 
and help humanity raise the vibration so then all of us could move to this other frequency. And that's, that is so gorgeous and that is very relevant. That's where we are. And very easily you can look in that book and you'll find yourself. So many people have, they, they come back to us and say, oh my gosh, I thought I was crazy. I thought I was the only one that felt like this. I want to tell you, you are not. There are droves and droves and droves of volunteers here. And that is the purpose. That is the mission. And it's working. It has worked. It is working. We are doing a great job of the frequency is raising. Oh my gosh, look where we are. All you have to do is look at it and you can see mission accomplished. It's, it's mission accomplishing. Okay. It's all in the wonderful process of being. So does that help Kaya? Beautiful. Yes. Incredibly detailed explanation. Great clarification. I love it. I think we're running out of time. Oh my uh, goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I am so sorry. I didn't mean to be so long winded on that. <laughs> It's good. It's good. Loving, loving, loving the conversation today. I want to thank yeah. everyone. If if you find some of these topics interesting, and um, you find when we specifically talk about QHHT and exploring higher forms of consciousness and past lives and future lives and the new earth, and you're curious and you want to take the course, we have an online course. You can go to the QHHT website and QHHTofficial.com. QHHTofficial.com. And Julie has a coupon code that you can use for 10% off. Let me and get up here where you can see. Okay. That is lots of love is the coupon code. 10% off the QHHT code. Lots of love. Such a beautiful. Mm -hmm. beautiful. <laughs> yes. uh, I would say, everybody, thank you so much. It was a beautiful, beautiful week of connection here. Mm -hmm. Go out there. Be lucky in the coming week ahead. Allow your lucky self to fully blossom. Take the extra attention to get into a place of gratitude, relax into it and see your dream life like a child and exist in that dream life and spend time in that dream life every single day to where that dream life becomes second nature. Dance in it, play in it, feel it, make it colorful make it delightful and that dream life will welcome your physical self in it's just a matter of time till you're completely in it yeah and you'll be so surprised you'll look back one day and say oh my gosh when did i get here i am in my dream life just just do it just be you and do it I am so glad and so grateful for every single one of you and for being here. I'm so grateful for you, Kaya, for being partners with you. And I'm so grateful for everyone in my life. I love you all and can't wait to see you again. <laughs> Hi, everyone. The, week, the day before on Thursday, we'll make the announcement of where we're going to be. So you can tune in on, on Thursday. We'll make the announcement same same time next week. See you soon. <laughs>